Welcome to a new era of interactive learning, lab experiences that mirror traditional campus labs in the convenience of your home. Just like in the campus laboratory, you must follow important safety procedures before, during, and after experimentation. Follow these instructions and you too will have a safe and effective learning experience. You'll notice microscale techniques, very small quantities of chemicals that contribute to the safety of the experiments. So make sure you read all the safety sections before starting your lab activities. Your instructor may have you fill out, sign, and send in the safety assessment. Specific safety directions are also listed at the beginning of each experiment in your lab manual. This video details the safety protocols you need to understand and implement in order to conduct scientific experiments at home. In addition, you will learn how the safety information and procedures you perform working independently compare to those safety guidelines, procedures, and equipment you would use in a campus laboratory. Just like in a campus lab, there are three phases of laboratory safety measures for the at-home lab. Preparation, experiment, and cleanup. Each phase has unique safety considerations. The concepts and procedures will differ somewhat working at home compared to a campus lab, but the objectives are always the same. At home, you are responsible for all safety procedures. Your preparation, taking proper precautions, and just good common sense will ensure your safety. Set yourself to observation mode. We're initializing the safety training procedure now. Let's go. The prep phase of your at-home lab work requires gathering, organizing, and preparing all of the materials you will need for your experiment. Here are the steps. Before starting each experiment, read all information and instructions. Review the Related Materials Safety Data Sheets MSDS, for chemicals used. Complete the emergency contact card and place it near your telephone. Whether at home or in a campus lab, prepare yourself to do lab activities wearing proper clothing, tying back hair, and removing dangling jewelry. Make sure to wash your hands carefully before and after handling laboratory materials and wear the safety gear. Most people find their kitchen the most convenient place to work, but a garage or study can also work. Your workspace doors should be closed and preferably locked. Keep any pets and kids away from your work area and don't leave an experiment in progress unattended unless it is in a locked and secured room and never leave a flame or heat experiment unattended, ever. In addition, no eating, drinking, cooking, or smoking while you are doing your work. Here are key factors to incorporate in your workspace. Protect your work table or surface by covering it with plastic sheeting or a white garbage bag. An open window or stove exhaust fan are adequate to provide proper ventilation. Certain chemicals have noxious fumes that can be dangerous if inhaled in sufficient quantities, and flammable vapors can become explosive if allowed to accumulate in an enclosed space. Have some water available, either a sink, bottled water, or a bathroom shower nearby. In a campus lab, you'll find the safety shower and eye wash stations should you ever splash or spill chemicals on yourself or a fire starts. This is highly unlikely to happen since the micro-scale quantities provided are too small for major reactions. For experiments using chemicals, keep a bag of sand or kitty litter on hand to absorb and contain any chemical spills. Keep sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, on hand to neutralize spilled acids before attempting to wipe them up. Concentrated acids can cause serious burns, so neutralize them before cleanup to help to prevent a painful injury. It's also a good idea to have a first aid kit handy. If you have a fire extinguisher, know where it is in your home. Take precautions and don't be careless when working with an open flame. Examine glassware for any chips or breaks and if found, discard immediately. Pay attention when heating items. Don't touch with bare hands to avoid burns. Some physics and geology experiments can involve the safety hazards of moving objects. So always have ample room to conduct these types of experiments. You might want to tell other people in your household of your activities to ensure everyone's safety. 
Now that you understand the critical safety measures involved in the prep phase, you are ready to move on to the most exciting and fun part, the experiment. Don't let your guard down, though. Safety precautions must be followed throughout all phases of your learning experiences. Awareness is your ultimate weapon against safety hazards, accidents, and emergencies during your experiments. You need to be aware of things that can happen so that you can prevent mishaps and react quickly if problems arise. Should an accident occur, the big boom of full-scale chemical quantities in a laboratory is a small poof in your home environment. At home or in a lab, always wear the appropriate personal safety gear for the experiment you are doing. Here is more detailed information about chemicals to keep in mind as you conduct your experiment. Some chemicals can be corrosive, flammable, and generally hazardous. Read all labels carefully and follow instructions precisely. Use only the amounts of chemicals needed for your experiment. Never refill used chemical containers. Used chemicals may be contaminated and you could end up with an unexpected and potentially unpleasant reaction. Some of the chemicals included are solvents. Most solvents are highly flammable and should never be exposed to an open flame. Examples are alcohols, toluene, ethers, acetone, and ethyl acetate. Certain chemicals produce toxic fumes that can be dangerous if inhaled. Never directly sniff a chemical. Instead, waft the vapors toward your nose with your hand. Acids are chemicals that can cause severe burns, so handle them with care. Never add water directly to a concentrated acid. This generates heat and can cause dangerous splattering that is similar to what happens when you add water to hot oil. The proper way to mix acids with water is to follow the AA rule, add acid. You should slowly add acid to water while stirring the water with a glass rod, never the other way around. In addition to caution with chemicals, remain aware of fire hazards. Open flames, heated objects, and burners can pose serious safety threats during your experiment. Here are some tips to keep in mind. Never leave an open flame unattended. It only takes seconds for loose clothing or other items to catch fire. On a similar note, always extinguish heat sources when not in use. Test metal and glass objects for heat prior to handling in order to avoid burns, and be careful to only heat objects that are designed to be heated. Certain glass objects, such as graduated cylinders and flasks, are not meant to be heated and could shatter if exposed to a heat source. If a glass object shatters or breaks, don't risk a cut by picking up the glass with your hands. Instead, sweep the broken pieces into a dustpan and carefully dispose of them immediately. If a burn occurs, cold running water is the best treatment, followed by medical attention if necessary. There are important safety concerns to keep in mind if you're performing biology experiments that include dissections. Follow proper cutting and dissection procedures. A slip of a sharp scalpel can cause a laceration. Never cut items while holding them in your hand and always cut away from the direction of your body. Now that you know what to be aware of while performing your experiment, you're ready to get started. Finishing the experiment does not signal the end of your lab safety protocol. It signals the beginning of your final phase, cleanup. During cleanup, dispose of all chemicals and dissection specimens appropriately. Used and unwanted microscale chemicals can be flushed down the toilet or sink, and non-chemical items can be disposed of in the trash. Wrap dissection specimens in newspaper and seal in plastic prior to placing in the trash. Wash your work surface and all laboratory equipment with dish detergent and warm water. Rinse equipment with distilled water and air dry glass objects. Clean pipettes by drawing up and expelling distilled water several times. Then, while squeezing the bulb, forcefully swing them in a downward arc. Double check that all materials have been properly cleaned and put away. Store your lab out of reach of children and pets. Congratulations, you have successfully completed the safety training video. But before you go, please keep in mind one final word of caution 
that is just for female students. If you are pregnant or plan to become pregnant, seek your doctor's advice prior to performing the experiments. Certain experiments may involve chemicals that can pose a risk to your unborn baby. Your doctor can tell you if it is safe to complete all of the experiments required for your course. If you have any further questions regarding the important safety measures required in using your lab, discuss them with your instructor or contact Hands-On Labs Incorporated. Thank you for watching.